Roof Together, an online service, January 24th, 2021. Imagine engaging in the work. Our welcome this morning is from Kenny Anderson. Hello, and welcome to the online service of the Rogue Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, which we affectionately call ROOF. My name is Kenny Anderson, and I am a participant of the worship team. I also want you to know that this is deeply important to me because there's not a day that goes by that I'm not so very grateful for being a part of Roof, this house of love, where we put our beliefs into action and take care of one another. During these times, we cannot safely meet together. These online services, are our way of connecting and continuing to keep the mission of our congregation and our association alive in our lives and in the world. We're glad you are here, and we ask you to join us in embracing diversity, empowering connection, and engaging in this work. Each week when we gather, we acknowledge that the land on which we live here is the traditional home of the Cow Creek Umpqua, the Tecalma, Shasta, and Lagawa peoples. We remind ourselves that indigenous people are part of our communities and continue to experience the effects of colonization and conquest. We are committed to fighting for the worth and dignity of indigenous people in our community and around the world. We also commit ourselves to work for a world in which the lives, work, bodies, dreams, and leadership of black people are honored and respected. We remind ourselves each week that we must put our words and our principles into action every day for justice and the common good. Welcome and thank you so much for being with us. We are people of all ages, people of many backgrounds, and people of many beliefs. We are brave, curious, and compassionate thinkers and doers. We create spirituality and community beyond boundaries, working for more justice and more love in our own lives and in the world. From the UUA website. Our chalice lighting words are from Reverend Marta Valentin. We pause this morning from the chaos of the world to reclaim the beauty that carries us through our week. We lift this community onto our shoulders with pride and grace-filled expectation for our children and our children's children. Our opening song is Let Justice Roll Down by Eileen Vance, performed by Leah Morris. So I was led to nonviolence for deep moral reasons, and I turned to it because I felt that it was the morally excellent way to deal with the problem of racial injustice in our country. No freedom, the wise men said, let justice roll down, roll down. When the poor cry out for shelter and bread, let justice roll down like a mighty stream. Oh, children, don't you get we re-walk together, believe in the dream. When the way gets rough, we'll make a new way. Let justice roll down like a mighty stream Hatred will never drive out hate Let love roll down, roll down Remember our hearts can make us great Let love roll down like a mighty stream Oh, children, don't you get we re-walk Together, believe in the dream When the way gets rough We'll make a new way And let your love 
love rolled down like a mighty stream When brutality threatens our daughters and sons Let peace roll down, roll down May our voices rise up louder than the guns Let peace roll down like a mighty stream Oh, children, don't you get weary Walk together, believe in the dream When the way gets rough, we'll make a new way And let peace roll down like a mighty stream Step by step, one by one Let justice roll down, roll down but the dream lives on Let justice roll down Like a mighty stream Oh, children, don't you carry me Walk together and live in the dream When the way gets rough We'll make a new way and Let justice roll down Like a mighty stream to it because I felt that it was the morally excellent way to deal with the problem of racial injustice in our country. Our Peace Candle Words are adapted from Howard Thurman. I confess my own inner confusion as I look out upon the world. There is food enough for all, yet many are hungry. There are clothes enough for all, yet many are in rags. There is room enough for all. Many are crowded. There are none who want war, yet preparations for conflict abound. Let love burn in me that I may from this moment take effective steps within my own power to live up to the love and courageously pay for the kind of world I so deeply desire. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Our story is We March by Shane W. Evans, produced for the UU Congregation of Ann Arbor by Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout, Allison Hallers, and Mike Hallers, and using the music of James Williams. We March, a story by Shane W. Evans. The morning is quiet and we prepare to march. We pray for strength. We work together. We come from all over to march. We follow our leaders. We walk together. We sing. We are hot and tired, but we are filled with hope. We lean on each other. As we march to justice, to freedom, as we march to our dreams.
Our offering words are adapted from John B. Wolfe. There is only one reason for joining a Unitarian Universalist congregation, and that is to support it. We want to support it because it stands against superstition and fear and points toward the noblest and best in human life. It is open to all, whatever religion, race, creed, color, gender identity, or sexual orientation. It is a place where children can learn that religion is for joy, comfort, gratitude, and love. We want to support it because it is a place where walls between people are torn down rather than built up. You can mail your gift to 87 4th Street, Ashland, Oregon, 97520, or give online by going to tinyurl.com, Roof Offering. Or you can text the amount you'd like to give to 541-229-4229. If you need support during these difficult times, contact Reverend Sean using the form on our website. We will do our best to help. For these gifts, and all the gifts you bring into this community and the world, thank you. Please center yourself to the song Change is Coming by Molly Banjgott, performed by the Creative Arts Therapy Team of Care Dimensions Hospice in Massachusetts. Change is common. What do we need to imagine? Change is common. What do we need to imagine? Cause I know oh, oh, oh. from brokenness there's hope. I know oh, oh, oh. from brokenness. There's hope. Change is common. What do we need to imagine? Change is common. What do we need to imagine? To be prepared. I know I'm scared to be. There's hope I know From brokenness there's hope Change is coming What do we need to imagine? To be Change is coming I know What do we need to I'm imagine? To I be
Our reading is Amanda Gorman, reading her poem, The Hill We Climb, at the inauguration of President Joseph R. Biden. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared it at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked... How could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert. How could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised, but whole, benevolent, but bold, fierce, and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. 
So let us leave behind a country better than one we were left with every breath from my bronze pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the wind swept northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked south. We will rebuild reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Our sharing is Imagine Engaging in the Work by Reverend Sean. This week has been full of things that feel like they have been preparing us for this moment and this sermon. Today we apply our monthly theme, Imagination, to the third part of the mission statement adopted by this congregation a few years ago. This third part, or phrase, to engage in the work, is both beautifully aspirational and frustratingly vague. Yes, my heart responds, let's do something. Let's engage. Let's put our principles into action. But that joyful excitement is quickly followed by questions. But what should we do? What is the work? How do we know? And even more quietly and timidly, and what if we fail? This is a sacred and scary moment. This is the moment we move from being thinkers to thinkers and doers. This is the moment we lift this congregation, these ideals, and this whole enterprise of moral excellence and liberal religion onto our shoulders and get to work to build a new way. Imagination is a necessary and powerful tool as we not only face but embrace that change is coming. What do we need to imagine? Wholeness, yes. And joy, strength, love, peace, and pride that get us past being scared. All that we have learned and all that we have gained and gathered from our connectedness is ready to be put to use in imagining a future and a world that embraces the beauty of difference and diversity, welcoming all into genuine and gracious community where connections are empowered and empower us. This work, which Howard Thurman described as to take effective steps within my own power to live up to the love and courageously pay for the kind of world I so deeply desire. And the poet Amanda Gorman called us to when she spoke of repairing the past and being brave enough to cast off the shade and see the light, brave enough to be it. What a week to imagine the work. The work of our liberal religious community is not small. It begins in our individual hearts as we endeavor to live up to the love, to prepare even though we're scared, to imagine ourselves ready for the era of just redemption. We feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but Within it, we found the power to author a new chapter. The past few days, weeks, and years have shown us that it matters that we engage in the work, both personally and as a congregation, community, and nation. 
when we forego the part of Thurman's words that ask us to pay for the kind of world we deeply desire, we find ourselves reaping the consequences of allowing others to build a different kind of world, one run by ego, fear, hatred, and violence. It is our work to enlarge love until all people are honored and treated in accordance with their inherent worth and dignity. This isn't an abstract principle. It means we must root out prejudice and hierarchies that have been taught to justify exclusion, inequality, injustice, poverty, and suffering. Our principles the values that guide our work insist that we build communities and institutions that can and do welcome all people, not so they can change and be like us, but to change us to be more loving, more generous, more welcoming, more just, and more radically inclusive every day. The work starts in each heart and expands into our community through our covenant and practice. We take the congregation onto our shoulders and carry it into a future that we may not ever see fully realized. We carry it on a path that when it gets rough, we build as we go. To engage in the work is to repair what has caused us to be too insular, to dream too small, to forget to prepare because we are scared of change. But the work of our time is change. The world of this moment is a work in progress, demanding that we pay attention to more than our own comfort and needs. Change is coming. What do we need to imagine? There's one more thing I wanna say about engaging in the work. It isn't a secret, but it isn't always obvious either. We sometimes need to be shown or reminded by the poets, the artists, the imaginers, and by other doers. Amanda Gorman ended her inaugural poem with a glimpse of it. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover and every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge, battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. The secret, or maybe just the thing that's not obvious when we talk about work, is that when we engage in it, we find that we too emerge from the shade, the place that is obscured and hidden, and find ourselves free and beautiful and alight with the colors of the new dawn. And there is immense joy and strength and love and peace and pride in us and among us as we help build the world that we have so long and so deeply desired. May we be brave enough to see it. May we be brave enough to be it. And may we know the deep joy of being part of the work that brings it into being. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. Our closing song is This Joy, performed by the Resistance Revival Chorus. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this strength that I have, this strength that I have. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This strength that I have. Oh, 
written by the poet Toy Derricotte when she wrote, Joy is an act of resistance. We believe in the words of Mr. Harry Belafonte, who said, when the movement is strong, the music is strong. We sing to revive the hearts of those who fight for social justice. And we sing together for freedom. Our closing words are from Maya Angelou. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but faced with courage need not be lived again. Lift up your eyes upon the day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. invited to join us for Zoom Coffee Hour every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Visit our website to sign up for our mailing list and get details on how to join each week.